Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. Today we are going to revise environment for Philips 2021. First topic is blue flag certification. Union Ministry of Environment and Forest Climate Change has recommended eight beaches for blue flag certification. Uh, those blue flag certification, the eight beaches are Shivrajpur, Kogliya in Deyu, Kasarkot in Karnataka, Padubidri, Kapad in Kerala, Rishkonda in Epi, Golden Puri in Odisha, Radha Nagar in Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Now, what do you mean by blue flag certification? Blue flag certification is kind of a certificate given to beaches or marine bodies for sustainable use of beaches or marine bodies to maintain the cleanliness and maintain hygienic conditions of the beaches. Now, it's kind of a certificate as you all know. Certificate. Certificate is nothing but after doing some degree, we will get a certificate like that. Here the beaches are given kind of a certificate like how they are maintaining the beaches, how they are um, using the beaches properly without littering anything. So for that sake, it is given. It was started in France in 1985, in Europe since 1987. And many parts of the country of Europe has more number of beaches which, have was, which has been given blue flag. Now, this certificate, who is giving? It is given by international body which is non-governmental non-profit organization that is FEE the foundation for environmental education now is there any criteria yes of course there are criteria it has 33 criteria under which it is divided into four parts four heads that is called as the first one is environmental education information bathing water quality environment management and conservation safety and services the next topic is beams beach environment and aesthetic uh, management services now as i said you about blue flag certification it is the same thing uh, but the union ministry of india has a forest climate change has, has launched its own eco label that is called as beams thus it is having the same objective as blue flag certification to maintain the and develop sustainable use of beaches and to provide all the facilities and to conserve the coastal ecosystems and natural resources and to bring awareness among the people to bring the highest standards of cleanliness and safety and security of beach goers now the next topic is gi certificate shahiliji now shahiliji was in use because of because it was given gi tag now shahiliji if you know that is an agriculture product mostly we get from Bihar so as we all know a specific product if it is grown in that particular area GI tag is given to that particular product from that area right now uh, as we all know mostly the Shahi Lichi is found in Bihar so GI certificate Shahi Lichi is given to Bihar right now India is the second largest producer of Lichi in the world after China now what is your ge geographical indication that is GI tag it is kind of a sign used on a products that have a specific geographical origin and possess qualities on a reputation that are due to the origin. That means if you say, for example, Darjeeling tea, tea that is famous because it is grown in Darjeeling and it has a specific character because it is grown in that particular area. So the qualities which and the characters which we get in that particular tea, which we cannot get any other areas, we will have different taste. Of tea from different areas. So, Darjeeling is famous for its tree. The same way, Shahili tea is also given GI from Bihar, which is also given GI tag because it is good in that. Now, as I said, the quality characteristic depends on particular places the GI tag is given. Okay. Now, significance of GI tag. Significance means it is giving the proper rights and protection to the particular. Uh, to the holders who have the right to in to use those GI tag for that particular product, and uh, it sees that other third party does not intervene and make you misuse of it. Next, next topic is cyanobacteria. Now, why we are reading cyanobacteria? Because it was in news, and where? If I say we came to know that 
many elephants died in Botswana by cyanobacteria. Yes, that's why we are reading cyanobacteria. Now, what is cyanobacteria? Cyanobacteria is a small unicellular photosynthetic bacteria that we can see that is often found in colonies. It may be microcellular. It is very small, which we cannot see through our naked eyes. So, uh, if we say it may be unicellular or it may be multicellular, right? Now, we can find um, cyanobacteria everywhere. It is photosynthesis. It can be aquatic also. That's what is called as blue green algae. Now, cyanobacteria is found almost every parts of the places. It has many habitual places. Habitat like oceans, freshwater, damp soil, rocks, deserts. And even in Antarctic rock also, we can find cyanobacteria. Now, since we are studying cyanobacteria related to Botswana, we should know about Botswana. Now, what is Botswana? It's a landlocked country. Okay, 70% is surrounded by Kalahari Desert. It is bordered by South Africa to the south and southeast, Nambia to the west and north, and Zimbabwe to the northeast. The next topic, if we move, that's Blue Pansy. What is Blue Pansy? It's a kind of butterfly which is spotted by environmentalist. It is one of the largest blue butterflies, which is from the family Nymphalidae. Its scientific name is Junonia orichia. It is a species of bright blue butterflies, as I said. It is found mostly in South Asian, Southeast Asian countries, Australia and Africa. And they prefer open habitat. And they can be found in grasslands also, woodlands, open forest, etc. It is not evaluated under IUCN category. The next topic is Climate Smart Cities Assessment Framework. The Ministry of State for Housing and Urban Affairs has launched the Climate Smart Cities Assessment Framework. Now, what is Climate Smart Cities Assessment? Kind of an assessment right? on climate parameters on which the smart city should be built. Based on the climate, how what kind of cities we should develop? It is kind of that assessment. Now, Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs has made wanted to create a cities which is eco-friendly and which is innovative, and it has less cost. So, to make a clear roadmap for Indian cities toward combating climate change while planning their actions within city, including investment. Based on the background, there are 28 indicators on which it is, which is divided in five categories, namely energy and green buildings, urban planning, biodiversity and green cover, mobility and air, water resource management and waste management. As we all know, in cities, we are very crowded. The buildings are nearby. So sometimes it is difficult for all the buildings to get proper air facilities and uh, it's difficult to have a green greenery around us. So, the government is planning to make a, such a building, such a smart cities, which has all the facilities to everyone. The next topic is <coughs> aquaponics type of agriculture. What is aquaponics? It's kind of a Emerging technology and technique, it is a technique where fishes as well as plants are grown together. Here, the fish provides fertilizer to the plants. The plants absorb nutrients and filter the water. This filter water is used to clean the fish tank, to regenerate the fish tank. This is an environment friendly technique. It helps the farmer in increasing the production of his land. To increase the production, right? Is we can see this technology used in Kerala, right? That's all for today. Lastly, we I will tell you about bamboo technology, which is set up in Jammu and Kashmir to make bamboo ba basically pass uh, basketry, agarbatti, and bamboo circle. Bamboo technology is used useful in many ways. We'll know about it in the next my segment. Thank you.
aquaponics. It's one of the emerging agriculture technique where both fishes and plants are grown together. In holiness, if you see integrated farming where more than one type of crops were grown together so that the both plants support each other. For example, one was paddy, the other was legume. The legume used to support with the nutrients for the next plant. Right? In the same way here, the fishes will provide nutrients for the plants. This emerging technique was used in Kerala where fishes will provide nutrients to the plants and this is an environmentally friendly technique which will be asked in the question in the exam so it's an important to remember the next topic is bamboo technology park bamboo technology parks they were recently set up in Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh Union territories. The main objective is to make bamboo baskets, agrabati, and bamboo charcoal. It provides the people around the forest area self-sufficient and increase their economy. The Ministry of Northern Eastern Council The minister, sorry, Ministry of Development of Northeastern Council will set up this new technology parks in Jammu and Ladakh Union Territories. Model agency is CBDs, C, that is Cane and Bamboo Technology Center under the Ministry of Northeastern Council. It will implement this project with the help of United Nations Development Program. Now, what is Cane and Bamboo Technology Center? It is one kind of uh, Nodal agency under Northeastern Council, which was set up to expand the bamboo, uh, not expand, to use, make use of the bamboo for better living for the forest people around the area. It was formed so that the bamboo sector can be enhanced and it can be further utilized for the better income of the country. It will help the bamboo actually if you see it is grow, it grows very fastly and it can be made into chairs and uh, if you see it is also used in construction of houses recently they are using in many of the industries for many purposes and if you see they are very strong bamboo technology parks they were recently set up in jammu and kashmir and ladakh union territories the main objective is to make bamboo baskets, agrabati, and bamboo charcoal. It provides the people around the forest area self-sufficient and increase their economy. The Ministry of Northern Eastern Council, the minister, sorry, Ministry of Development of Northern Eastern Council will set up this new technology parks in Jammu and Ladakh Union Territories. Nodal agency is CBDs, C, that is Cane and Bamboo Technology Center under the Ministry of Northeastern Council. It will implement this project with the help of United Nations Development Program. Now, what is Cane and Bamboo Technology Center? It is one kind of uh, nodal agency under Northeastern Council which was set up to expand the bamboo uh, not expand to use make use of the bamboo for better living for the forest people around the area it was formed so that the bamboo sector can be enhanced and it can be further utilized for the better income of the country it will help the bamboo actually if you see it is grow, it grows very fastly and it can be made into chairs and uh, if you see it is also used in construction of houses recently they are using in many of the industries for many purposes and if you see they are very strong and it helps 
for a long time if we see the normal chairs we purchase it won't be so strong as bamboos so uh, if we this is one of the scheme which is working under national bamboo mission so you should remember this the next topic is the danaid egg fly it's kind of a butterfly from the family infalidae it's not so important that is just you have to know it is found in open country in scrubland and in moist areas in africa asia australia it is protected under the wildlife protection act of india 1972 and in under iucn it is not evaluated and next topic we'll move is the emission gap report 2020 as you all know the emission gap report is one of the important reports it is released by unep if you say this the emissions are mostly from the energy industry forest transport agriculture and then building so from the energy sector we are having more emissions than other sectors every year the emission has been increasing from 2010 it is it has rapidly increased and the carbon dioxide emission has been more nowadays in the present from the past 5 years fossil carbon dioxide are also having a maximum ghg emission according to the reports top four countries are china us U eu uk and india india is a present fourth largest emitter to say in spite of the pandemic it has not been reduced because of this emissions what is happening the temperature of the temperature is rising the temperature in the countries in the whole world it is rising not only in india it is rising everywhere it is rising every day if this continues the temperature will be increasing day by day and every year it will increase so it's very important to stop this to reduce this emissions so as i said emission gap report is released by unep so we should know a little about unep unep United Nations Assembly is a governing body of UNEP. UNEP program is one of the program which is which its a objective is for the sustainable development environment sustainable development. Its publication flagship publications are Our Planet, Twins Are, Atlas of a Changing Environment, Global Environment. The awards which are not so important to remember but sometimes in the questions they'll be asking so you should know a little about it the outlook awards by unep uh, and the uh, champions of the earth seeds award and saska prize award uh, unep also hosts many uh, conventions which are minimata conventions on mercury the basel conventions the rotterdam convention the stockholm conventions the vienna convention Montreal Protocol and Conventions on Migratory Species, Carpathian Convention and Bakamo Conventions. Moving to the next topic is climate change performance. India, India has reached tenth place. Previous year it was ninth place. Now this year it is tenth place. It is released by German Watch Climate Action at Work. and it is an independent monitoring tool for tracking country's climate production performance it compares the climate production performance of all uh, seven countries of european union and other countries if you see only the european countries are responsible for 90% of global greenhouses the main objective of this index is to compare the climate performance and how much efforts the country is taking to protect 
and further how they are doing for the for their better environment now what is the criteria which the climate index is done there are 14 indicators uh, which are divided in few categories that are green gas emissions renewable energy energy use and climate policy greenhouse gas emissions most of which 40 percent of which is calculated sorry as i said you eu occupies 90% of the global greenhouse gases. Here, in this index, the three places are unoccupied. The first top three places are unoccupied. So, the next place, the next place is occupied by next uh, countries. India is at the 10th place. So, because of these greenhouse gases, we are raising the global warming by 2 degrees or 1.5 degrees Celsius according to this this climate change they compares the country's performance with the targets of Paris climate so accordingly they will assess the climate performance of the countries here, as I said you, the three, first three places are not occupied by any countries. The fourth place is occupied by Sweden. The next is UK. Next, Denmark is occupied sixth, Morocco seventh, Norway eighth, Chile ninth, and the tenth place is by India this year. India's performance, as I said you, overall performance is 10. And the last year it was ninth place. In emissions, India occupied 12th place. In energy use, India has occupied 10th place under this category, which is very good. In renewable energy, India is still standing in 27th place out of 57 country. In climate change policies, India is performing in the 13th place. So you should remember the country, India's position and what are the criteria according to which climate change index is performed.